We live in an era where the storms of technologically driven New World colonial imperialism, 1492 to 1945, have continued to rage. The natural consequence was that modern nationalism arose in the Old and New World, 1776 to 1945. The reality is that nationalism in the Old World was caught up in the growing storm of imperialism. It's almost as if European nationalism was harnessed as a social technological development to achieve imperial objectives. The culmination and climax of the imperial storm were the world wars of the early 20th century. And when the storm subsided, both the old world and new world nationalisms were virtually completely trapped under imperial ideological mud. One could say that the Cold War was simply an ideological war to let that muddy sludge harden and thus completely bury nationalism. The disillusionment of the world wars was experienced through the eyes of people with imperial dreams, and not from the hearts of bewildered communities. The entire world order after the two world wars was aimed at getting and maintaining a stranglehold on any form of the original species, of nationalism. Nationalism became a universal equivalent for fascism and communism, and the liberal democratic world order was set up against it, where only individuals stand against the state. Within all liberal democracies, Efforts were made to ensure that people would never again see value in independent norm-forming communities, only the international was encouraged. Ultimately, by 1991, the liberal order effectively ruled from the power of the willing elite of virtually every nation, people, and language that had by that time been successfully co-opted to become part of a new imperial liberal democratic world empire. An imperial empire where no form of nationalism could freely arise or exist. This type of oppression of the imperial world empire is justified with the ideology of open communities and is called globalism, and the elite still maintains it, largely at the expense of almost all independent norm-forming communities. The goal is still to create completely isolated individuals who are defenseless against the state and imperial objectives. It must be remembered that the co-opted elite exists within and between all people groups and can be recognized by their great influence and their dedication to internationalism at the expense of independent norm-forming communities. However, as liberal democratic ideas led to globalism and some form of an imperial world empire, a new storm has arisen, a dramatic, enriching, and with energy that is still building up as the power of the only superpower, crumbles and other imperial objectives begin to gain power. Yet, at the same time, the new seed of a new type of nationalism began to germinate across the world a new nationalism that cannot be attributed to one civilization. The seed of independent norm-forming communities, right across the world, and not the classical 19th-century European nation-states and colonies. Something entirely different from the order that the Peace of Westphalia caused. This new type of nationalism is, in reality, seen as green, fragile new living communities during the build-up of the new imperial storm. New communities that understand the nature of the world just as they personally and as a group experience and understand the nature of imperialism. New communities that are no longer amazed by modernization, but have already internalized it and now want to use it to truly be a happy community in a world of independent communities. In short, individuals who are not just controlled as a moral entities by a power system. This is a new nationalism that experiences the disillusionment of the world wars and the Cold War, an ideological oppression from within the community itself and wants to find its place in its fundamental civilization, and a commonwealth of civilizations and humanity. It can be described as being organically independent and ecologically integrated. The question is, what will the imperial storm do to the multitude of developing, independent norm-forming communities? Remember that most of the world's elite have not yet dedicated themselves to their own independent norm-forming community, and are still trying to enforce and maintain imperial international authority. The destructive tailwinds and storms of imperial objectives still rage over the multitude of communities that truly want to be free. The nature of the storm is well known and is nothing other than what has ruled since the earliest times of imperial domination. What is important to remember in this storm is that new technology, just as in the past, will again determine the nature of the new imperial storm, because it will channel the objectives of the imperialists and the independent eco-organic groups, just like the technology that made the First and Second World Wars what they were. In addition to the technology that has developed the exercise of power into a totally focused and controllable power system, there is now also a technology that can truly document and prove the independence of all norm-forming communities, 
just as it can prove and above all, describe the transactional and social nature of all individuals. We call this technology blockchain and already use it to describe the nature of fiat money and protect transaction records. Blockchain technology is simply an information system that operates and maintains a distributed, tamper-proof ledger of any transactional records and agreements. In short, blockchain brings cryptographically secured transactional security within the reach of any community that can use it. The problem is that blockchain technology can also empower the ultimate form of imperial oppression if the justice it is supposed to, support can be withheld from communities and the transaction ledger can again be filled with transactional injustices. However, the nature of the distributed, and necessarily loosely connected independent community networks can still very successfully protect the energy and processing capacity of the blockchain. By its distributed nature, it can literally be monopolized nowhere, because any group and any individual can focus their own energy and processing power on their sphere of transactions, and then organically become part of a growing network. The process can literally replicate over and over, die out, and replicate again, always with the same certainty about what has transpired. It can work for independent communities precisely by using the organic independence of communities, as they form the locus of equal or flat networks instead of hierarchical networks. Hierarchies can exist independently within a community, but they can be isolated to that community to keep the network between communities flat and equal. That is why no independent norm-forming community can safely exist if it does not learn how to be part of a worldwide network of other transactional entities. What we know as state administration can now be successfully and optimally managed for a distributed community and between communities. The cardinal feature of blockchain technology is that, just like any successful money or economic system, this technology does not try to control complexity. All it has proven it can do is create absolute certainty about a ledger's transactional state at any moment in the present and past. The complexity is therefore not taken away but merely transactionally and syntactically described. The description does not contain absolute semantic truth, but it does contain the syntactic nature of intentions, and we all should know that intentions should never be equated with perfection. It is from that transactional certainty that rapid and effective justice and alliances can be ensured between individuals as well as within and between communities. This is how it can devolve state administration to true independent norm-forming communities, no matter how scattered they exist. With this technology, it may now sound possible to talk about a utopia, but wait just a little bit. Let us talk about another technology that could mean even more for our era than the Gutenberg event of the middle of the 13th century, which gave momentum to the Age of Enlightenment. This outstanding and democratizing new technology is widely available today. It is a form of artificial intelligence that has the ability to deduce the semantic structure of language from a multitude of human-made digital texts. It is a technology that can statistically analyze a wealth of texts and render them with brute processing power. It is a technology that can also analyze the intention of contracts and compare them with all the knowledge that can be shared among people. Without going into too much detail about how such large language models work, it is only necessary to mention the name of the most famous large language model eChatGPT, which was introduced by OpenAI. ChatGPT is just one of many large language models that now have the world buzzing and everyone is trying to make sense of what the potential impact is. Large language models, large audiovisual models, large design models, large physics models, and many other machine-learned models, along with blockchain technology that can ensure the content of digital texts, are all poised to give humanity the opportunity to become truly organized at any possible scale. Time will tell how this technology will empower or not empower our ideas and dreams about our future. And this brings us back to a point where we can cautiously and even skeptically ask about utopia. If the dream of a utopia for every individual can ever exist, then it must logically be where an individual experiences what it truly means to be free, and part of their own beloved independent norm-forming community. This excludes communities of universal compulsion because we know there are people who want to freely choose their relationships, and be devoted to them e it stands against anarchism and total domination but it includes all social obligations, and therefore requires a safe alliance sphere where an individual can exist as part of an independent community. This is the most natural state of being human, a person within their group. There simply is no state of a person without a group, for the simple reason that no person who enters the world can survive without care. 
Mirages of people being used by machines as absolute individuals have been introduced in the recent past through many popular stories and movies. But we all should know that there will never be such a utopia of independent communities in a humanistic space, at least not until the only logically true divine authority comes to determine the complex nature of the alliance sphere of communities. The most important thing to know is that the imperial alternative is the place where the individual faces all other individuals, amorally, atomistically, and completely exposed, and the always corrupt ruling class will try to enforce imperial objectives on individuals. The opportunity for a new beginning is already a reality, and we all see the lands green with the life of a multitude of new independent non-forming communities. The storms still rage as imperial powers try to tear the independent non-forming communities apart so that only enslaved individuals can try to stand against their power.